new package came in and this one is a ZX Spectrum Plus and it has this funky extension here and uh, what you cannot see is behind behind me here is this cute little joystick and that's what this is it's a joystick interface this video is kindly sponsored by PCBWay thank you PCBWay This Spectrum is in absolutely fantastic condition. I think I paid 60 euros for this with a power supply and uh, AV cable and this joystick interface which has this interesting thing here that you can actually look inside which I find extremely nice. And it's just a black case from the back. So I think this is actually professionally manuf manufactured doesn't look le like this has been made by someone at home this looks too too good yeah so let's take a closer look so this is pretty much the standard spectrum that you already know with the rubber keys and it has 48k so this only came with 48k the original spectrum came with 16k and could be extended to 48 and later models had 48k or they were delivered with 48k looks pretty much the same from the back because it's exactly the same motherboard and we will take a look inside and you will see it is exactly the same motherboard as in these other spectrums the standard ones you already may know nothing here they added this little fella here which is a reset switch so you don't have to unplug and plug the machine all the time still has speaker down here and it has these feet that come out and you can place it like this this whole thing is super fat so if you try to type on it your hands are very cramped you would expect it to be like this and it is like this so it's pretty much an uphill battle to type here keyboard is still horrible even though it has real keys now and real is a big word for this the keys are real but under there there's i think still the same or mostly the same mat of contacts to get to the keys it's themselves we have arrow keys which is new and they are funkily placed on both sides of the now larger space key and we have an, an enter key which is not for mice anymore or at least very big mice yeah, it, as I said, it's it's a bit dusty, but it's in excellent condition. I have no idea if it works. So before we go and plug it in, I say we open it up and take a look inside. Never had one of these. And to actually use this, and so that I can show you on the screen what I see, we have to do the composite mod and that is a pretty simple mod it's just a wire and uh, a cap if i remember correctly so that should be that and then we should just lift this up and to the side and there we are oops oh uh <clears throat> these are the feet no idea how that was in here so I destroyed that one, nice. As you can see, the reset switch is just a cable and a switch connected here. And this is an uh, issue three board actually. Cables look good, yeah, board looks good. So nothing, nothing fancy here to see. Still has this huge heat sink on the 7805. Uh, put these back in ah I think these are like this okay they just push down on these on these feet they're just two plastic things so let's pull these here put that to the side for now put these to the side for now what we have to do is we have to 
I think cut this one and do something with this one. So let's open this can up because we have to get in there. Yeah, there we are. And there's our connector. I will use this connector, which is for the RF cable. And we will just turn that into our composite out. So what we have to do, and we will do this the old fashioned brutal way, is to cut the connection from this resistor right here, which is connected to the uh, center pin of the chinch connector here. And we just cut this snippity snip and put it away. And we will put some heat shrink on there so that it doesn't short anything. And we have to cut these two lines here. And this should be the composite line here. And this should be the five volts going into the modulator. So these two wires have to be cut or desoldered we do that and that's that now we just bend these out for now and put some heat shrink over this resistor Oops, this right here like this and burn the hell out of that fella that's enough so that resistor is now gone or covered. Still have these two wires here and we have the ground or center pin, which is now free. So to make this a good mod, we go and we use 100 microfarad capacitor and we put the negative lead of this through this little second hole here and try to get to the middle pin of the of this change connection and we actually did it's just went right through it very nice and there we go and we solder this in on this side that's in and then we connect the positive side of this with the left hole here where we cut the wire That's in. Nice. So we have now connected that leg to the to the left pin there. A hole. Cut the excess wire here and inside the modulator should be ready to rock. Before we close this up, we just go and we test it. Leave this open for now. Check if it still works. Put that lid back on there like this. And that should be our mod done. And now we can just go and use one of these uh, chinch cables and uh, try to get an image. I have no idea if the power supply actually works. Let's maybe test that first. No explosion, which is a good sign. Let's take another look at PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. And uh, as you know, I like to show stuff that actually fits the project I'm working on right now. So I often go and check out shared projects. And here you just type in, let's say, Sinclair, Sinclair Statics Spectrum. So we have a wireless Kempston interface, a lot of them. ZX Pico F2 Lite, Spectrum 2 interface replacement, micro drive hardware emulator. It sounds interesting. And you can see how this is supposed to look in the end. Doesn't look too complicated. Hmm. And this works with a. Ah, Pi Pico again. So I may actually build this. Nice. And this is by Tom, Tom DD. 15K a second transfer rate. That is pretty impressive if you consider that loading a game on tape takes 15, 20 minutes. And that's about 30, 40K. So this is four seconds for a game. Okay, okay. So this might be one of my future projects. So if you like it, check it out. 
This is PCB way and um, back to the project. We get 14.42 volts, which is not nothing, but I think the spectrum can handle it. So we'll leave that out for now. And we need that cable here. Connect the red one here and the red one on the video side. And we get the no signal, which is good, which says my capture still works, which is nice for a change. And then we go, we plug it in and we hopefully don't get an explosion. Ah, look at that. Yeah, but it's really screaming. Voltage converter was really screaming. I have a replacement for that, which then removes this right here. But for now, we will just leave it in place. And I will grab my other power supply, which actually supports uh, just 9 volts center negative and take this out of the game here, because it's actually, I think, a, a little bit too high for my taste. So this is the other power supply, 9 volts center negative. Ah, yeah. You can see the, the power supply is pretty noisy. All this grisly stuff there is the power supply, which is one cheap thing. So yeah, that is what it is. Okay, so the machine works, which is great. Let's see if it actually resets with the reset switch. And it does. Nice. And then let's try the keyboard. If that works. Since the machine is in such great condition, I have no doubt that the keyboard just will just work. Yeah, much better. Now the signal. Now we can type. That actually looks pretty good. I think this machine works pretty well. Nice. Why don't we grab a device I built, this one right here. And this is a uh, TZ Arduino. And you can use this instead of a tape recorder to load games into the Spectrum and the MSX and all the other machines that have tapes, except for the Atari and the Commodore, because they have very specific non-audio standard tapes. So let's start this. And I built this myself. You can see it says TZ Arduino, blah, blah, blah. And we say next and we can Select ZX and we say play, and then we have the different games here Ballblazer, Back to the Future, Arkanoid, Arkan. Let's maybe go with Arkanoid. We have to um, da -da 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 put this audio cable here into the spectrum, into the ear, because ear is where it hears. And then we have to, how was that again? So you hit, have to hit J, which is load, and then symbol shift and, oh man, I hate that. You can't just type in the command, you have to use these commands on the keys. And hit P, and again, P. That should do the trick, and we press play. Seems that it's doing something. So it found Arkanoid. Not sure if it's really loading. But the cool thing is you can actually see kind of a progress bar here, a percentage. We are at 5%. So I will fast forward this. Um, not my life, but what you see. And we will see what we see. Yeah, that didn't work at all. It's not that bad because I have to plug in the joystick anyway. Let's try another game. I never actually managed to get a game loading on the Spectrum. That worked perfectly fine for my CPC, but not for the Spectrum. So let's 
go again. J, symbol shift, PP, enter, play. All blazer. That looks more like it. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Ah, look at that. We actually get an image. Nice. So fast forward. Will it work? Ah, it will. Nice. Okay, so this actually loads games, but I have no idea how to... I have no idea. Let's try Spellbound. Ooh, it loaded. Nice. Uh, we have... Is this a Kempston joystick? I don't know. Hmm. Let's say it's a Kempston joystick and let's try. It's a Kempson joystick, okay. Uh, 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 um. No, so this is inverted. Oh, I'm just stupid and hold it the wrong way around. <laughs> Which is also an option. Well, you have to hold it like this. The cable goes down, not up as in other joysticks. Then you go pick up object, uh, execute. We have the ah, but then the if I hold it like this, this is inverted. If I hold it like this, this is inverted. So what to do? I'm not sure. Did someone use this for some kind of flight simulator and inverted the controls? I don't know. But it works. It works really good. If you remember to ah, the famous red herring. No idea what that is. Ah, that's the teleport pad. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so, okay, this works. Um, nice. Very happy with the purchase. Um, so, yeah, I think this concludes this video. We tested an actual Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus and added a composite mod and used the TZX Duino to load a game. And, uh, yeah, as always, Thank you for watching and until next time. Cheerio! Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need any PCBs, pre-assembled PCBs or 3D printing, please use the link in the description below. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.